All right, so we have our no do item done for now at least. I think it's time for us to look at a database client. Now, the thing I said before is that database client, it's usually something that you write once and then you copy and put in a new file and then you adjust as you go. Because most of those uh, interactions, most of those properties and functionalities, functions are the same across, right? Database can only do a few things if you think about it, right? So CRUD, create, read, update, and delete. That's all. Of course, in between, there's a lot of things that can be done. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm actually going to create a new, inside of our util here, I'm gonna create a database client, which is gonna be very similar if not exactly the same as the previous one you saw before. Uh, but of course, we're gonna be changing a few things. Okay, so I'm gonna right click. And say database client or such. And what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna copy the whole code from my previous test application that I created previously before you saw this that way and then I can explain real quick but essentially it's really the same thing that we had before uh, in the previous videos and so there's no need for me to spend all the time typing it all in control V here and I'm gonna explain real quick a few things here so that we are indeed um, on the same page uh, of course there's a few imports that are not gonna work I'm gonna delete this one here in fact I'm not going to delete. I'm going to just adjust this. This is going to be called, uh, let's see, let's say import no to do. Probably the best is just going down here and find where the problem is and just start importing. There we go. And we should have everything should look great. So you, this again, this should be very familiar. So what we're doing here, we're creating that database helper instance so that we don't have to continuously create this object database helper when we want to use it, right? So this is a singleton um, design pattern, if you will. All right, so then I have table names, column ID. This will prevent us from making mistakes as we use all of these fields uh, in code, right? So we just call the name that we want okay that's easier of course do we have here we created a database static member that way we can use it to return our database and initialize it so that we're ready to use it okay I'm gonna make database that internal here as well as you can see that okay and then we have the init database which has been called once we ask to receive our database and sets everything up right this is where we're actually using our document directory to get application documents directory from Android and iOS, that's very important. And we are helped by using this plugin called Path Provider and the path, as you can see there at the top. And then of course we join, right? So the directory and the database name. What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna change this name here so we don't have contracts um, with naming database since I've already created a test application Okay, a demo application uh, before we embarked on creating this for you, with you. I'm gonna just change this. In fact, this is another trick. Whenever you're creating a database, a test database, or whenever you're creating an application that uses a database and you want to scratch everything, just come to this file and change database and run your application again. What it's gonna do is going to erase the previous database, obviously, because it will see that this database you had no longer exists, so you're gonna go ahead and create a new one. So that's a fast way to erase everything as you testing things around. Okay, so I'm gonna say no, just put a to do like that so that I differentiate the databases. In any case, there we go, and we have open database, all that stuff is great, and we're returning our database all created and everything. Okay, so this on created here, on create, as I should say, is called inside here, which creates a database, gives it a name. All of these names, of course, we put at the top here for easy access, if you will. And here we go. We have this save, right? We pass in a note to do item, which is this object here or class in this case. And like I said before, we decided that this should be stateless widget just to kill two birds with one stone. I don't like this analogy because for some of you, this can be very offensive, especially people who love birds. So I really apologize. Um, blame the American language for this. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're doing here. I have to do no to do item, 
which is an object that takes care of all the mapping and deciphering and and doing all the things that it needs to do uh, to actually get the object I create an actual object which then can be translated into something users can see as you can see here okay we're passing everything around in our widget data created and item name and so forth all of this is going to come from the database of course okay so that's what's happening from our database client and here as you can see okay so all of this shouldn't be anything new I've got a few things commented out here for your convenience but the idea is that here for instance we have this get items as the name imply it goes and gets all of the items from database now maybe you will notice there's something different that I've added here that you probably haven't seen before it says here order by so when we retrieve things from a database from a table we can actually order things by certain criteria in this case we're saying we want to order this by and we pass in the column name item or column item name in this case imagine that we're selecting this table which is indeed we call this no do table and we said all the data as it comes in to us or comes out the database the table we want it to be ordered by a column name in this case the column name is this item name it's going to order this by column name but we also want to make sure that is in ascending order right so from the small to big from the first one that was added to the last one descending is the opposite right as the name imply so that's something you can add if you want specific order or criteria okay and then we return our result as a list and then I have a few other helpers here like get count which just gets the count of how many are there and you notice some of these you may never use but it's always good to have so just in case you want to use these methods okay there's a get item just to get one item we pass in the ID and we select from the table where ID is the ID we're passing and of course here we are making sure if result that we're getting from the table the query is zero meaning there's nothing we just return nothing because there's nothing in this case just null okay else we're just going to return a no notice here no to do no do item from map because now we are converting the object we get from the database and map it to a map to a list that way we're able to go through it okay so it's from map so it's going to go from a map to an actual object so where did this come from if you actually say command and click it's going to go back to our to do or no do item I should say and there we go so we're using then all of this constructor that we created previously that maps and from one object type to another and so forth okay so not hard stuff it's just a little bit of work that we put in in previous videos and of course we have delete we have update and there's the closed database so all of this again it's something that you can actually take this and copy and put in a file that you can always use whenever you need to build an application that uses SQL flight that's that easy all you have will have to do is then change few fields or add other fields add more tables and do all sort of other things that you want to do so now that we have our database helper with us here it's time for us to go and start looking into putting things together uh, so at least we're going to be able to add things to our database and see them working We'll do that in the next video.